So why did we choose goats for our permaculture homestead? In addition to them clearing land so that we can eventually plant grapes there with better fertilizer, we also use them in our self-sufficiency plan in the sense that they make goat they make goat milk and they produce meat. It helps us prepare and a lot of the prepping we do is preserving their milk for winter. And this half gallon is from today alone. And we could actually get more if we tried to by milking them twice a day, but we're comfortable with this amount. This is actually very helpful for us. And what we do with this is we make milk is we use it for milk on cereal. We make cheese, kefir, yogurt. We make a bunch of things with them so that we're not wasting it. It's all part of our little system. And like I was saying, we could probably get more if we tried, but I love these girls and I really don't want to push them more than they're already being pushed, so we're just happy with what we have right now. Hang on, it's a song about goats. And in this video, I will show you how to make our yogurt. You can also slowly heat our milk on there without using electricity. And stay tuned to the end for updates from Trey's Aviary and Bunky's Garden. We use milk for a lot of things. We can use it for ice cream, kefir, cheese, milk, and some other things that we haven't even tried yet. In each pot here, we have half a gallon of milk plus what we milk today, which is, which is going to be my cheese later. This is going to be kefir. This is going to be yogurt. And something that we really love about our yogurt setting is the yoga therm that we use. And this doesn't use power at all. So even if we don't have power, like if it's a blackout or a power outage, in the event of a power outage, we can also use this, which is our family little grill thing that we made. And we have a grill cover that goes on top of this. So in the event of an outage, this is a little intense for it right now, but we can also slowly heat our milk on there without using electricity. We can still make our yogurt the same way we normally would because this just, you just put in your culture and you let it sit for a few hours depending on how consistent you like it. Over here I have the cheese press and the stand we use to strain the liquid out of the cheese after, it, after we take out the curds. And this we use for soft cheeses that you can spread on crackers and it's actually really good that way. We can use salt and herbs to make it more flavorful. And then we can take that and put it in here, which is the hard cheese press. And we can make it into a firmer cheese. And something I've been meaning to try is dipping them in brine to preserve them for winter. And if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. And it's something that I'm meaning to get to anyway, but if you're interested, I can work on that sooner. And like I was saying about the yogurt, this is used without power, but Bunky made a video using the Instant Pot when she was five years old two or three years ago. And that was actually the first video that started being seen by people other than our family and friend circle. So that was really where our channel started from. And I've linked that video up here. Okay, so to start the yogurt, you're going to use a half a gallon of milk and you're going to need your cultures. We use this kind of culture. It's the Yo Gourmet culture. And if you don't want to use cultures that you can get from Amazon like we did, you can also use a tablespoon or two of Greek yogurt that is unsweetened, um, plain. There was this one time that we couldn't get this from Amazon, so, so mom tried it like that. And it turned out well, it just wasn't as thick as we would like it, so that's why we keep using this. And you're going to need both packets. And to start making your yogurt, you're going to heat it to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, and you're not going to want to heat that too quickly, you're going to want to go really slow with it. So you're going to keep it in a medium high heat. And then you're going to let it cool off to around 110 and you're going to babysit it and you can use a candy thermometer or you can use an instant read thermometer. It's really just personal preference. And once it's cooled back down to 110, you're going to put in your cultures. So we're just going to start on that. And we're just going to let that cook until 180 degrees. And while I make the yogurt, I'm also going to be making kefir. And for those of you who don't know what kefir is, it's basically the same process as you would use to make yogurt but kefir uses a different culture. And what's so good about it is that it's basically like, it's more like a smoothie. 
It's a little thinner and you can use it over cereal. You can add it to smoothies if you want, but our family really likes it. And something that's really key about kefir is that it's really, really good for your stomach. It has a lot of bacteria that can help your stomach, especially if you have problems with your stomach or you're taking an antibiotic. This is really helpful for it. So we do like making it just because it's really, really helpful in that sense. Plus it tastes good. So just like with the yogurt, you're going to put this on the stove at 180 and then you're just going to wait until it goes back down to 110. So I'm going to check this one more time. I think it's probably close to 180 now. It's at 183. So we're good. It's important to note here that you really, really can't put the culture in before it hits 110 again. Because if you do, it's going to end up killing the cultures and you're just going to have milk with dead bacteria in it. So now they're both at 110 degrees and what I'm going to do now is put the cultures in. With the yogurt, I need to put it in the yoga therm and then put the cultures in and I'm going to let this sit for 8 hours. For the kefir, I need to put it in a half gallon jar, put the cultures in and let that sit for 24 hours. Then I just put the cultures in here and we're good to go. And then you're just going to stir it in. And like I said earlier, this is going to sit for eight hours. There, done. I'll be right back. I have to go get a half a half gallon container. So now this just goes in here. These work. And then same thing. You just put your cultures in, you stir it. But this one's gonna sit for 24 hours. Then I just need to put a lid on it and then it just needs to sit for 24 hours and it's done. We let this sit overnight and this is done and ready to be put in the fridge. Here you can see it's thickened up. Considerably. And I think this batch turned out really well. So that's really all there is to it to making goat yogurt with the yoga therm. Um, if, again, if you want me to make a video on doing hard cheese in the brine, just let me know in the comments. One of our favorite uses for using our goat yogurt is in parfaits, like this. And basically what, you're, what you do with it is you put in some granola, this is the granola recipe that we shared two or three years ago when we were a bit younger. Um, and I've linked the video up here, so if you want, you can check that out. That was a lot. And then you just layer it. This is um, black raspberry jelly like I told you I was making last night. This is an older batch. And here in July, it's raspberry season, so there's, we're getting a lot of these. This is from this morning alone, so we're very much in season with that. Now we just need a taste tester. Ooh, parfait! Yummy! Can I have some?
Maybe stir it a bit. It's yummy. I love raspberry season. And there you have it. Really, really awesome sun catcher that Miss Sandy made. It's really cool. It's got all these colors and it has a lot of green and I love green. Green is my favorite color because of how green the world is. I just love that color. And I don't know where I'm gonna put it in all of Hagrid's Haven. I'm at my garlic bed right now, and as you can see, my garlic, I have a lot of garlic, but it's looking kind of sad. But it's not sad. It's actually almost ready to harvest. Until next time, God bless.